Welcome to this video. Today, you're going to learn how to use been to and been in. This is a question that a student had submitted and it's a great question, so I'm happy to answer it for you. Of course, I'm Jennifer from j4senglish.com and this channel is dedicated to helping you feel confident speaking English in public so you can take your career and your life to the next level. Now, before we go any further, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon so you're notified every time I post a new lesson. Now, let's dive in with this video. Let's talk about the difference between been to and been in. So here are two example sentences. I've been to Paris five times. I've been in Paris for five weeks. What's the difference between these sentences? Well, let's talk about the first one. I've been to Paris five times. Notice that this sentence is in the present perfect. The structure of the present perfect is subject have or has conjugated with the subject, the participle form of the verb, the verb here is the verb to be. So the past participle of the verb to be is been. We use been with all the subjects. And then the rest of your sentence. I've been to Paris five times. So why is this sentence in the present perfect? Well, it's because we use the present perfect for life experience. And we use it for life experience because our life is an ongoing timeline. And because of that, we're talking about actions that started in the past, such as traveling to Paris, but it's an unfinished timeline. So I can continue doing this action in the future. So I've been to Paris five times, until now and it's possible for me to go to Paris again. So maybe next year I'll say I've been to Paris six times. Because of that, the sentence is in the present perfect. When we use the present perfect with the verb to be, to as our preposition and a location, such as I've been to Paris, Paris is the location, five times. So we do this to talk about places we've traveled or places we haven't traveled because things we haven't done is also part of our life experience. So we can put things we haven't done in the present perfect as well. So for example, I could say I've been to Thailand once, but I haven't been to Myanmar. Now let's compare this to I've been in Paris four or five weeks. Now here, this sentence is also in the present perfect, but the reason why this sentence is in the present perfect is different. We're not talking about life experience per se, we're talking about an action that started in the past and continues until now. So notice I said, I've been in Paris four five weeks. So what this means is five weeks ago, I arrived in Paris. That action started in the past, but here's the important thing. I'm in Paris right now. If I say I've been in Paris for five weeks, I'm currently in Paris, okay? That's the very important thing to keep in mind. So when we use the present perfect with the verb to be, the preposition in, and then a location, this is used to talk about where we are now, and that action started in the past, but it continues until now. For example, I could say, my flight was canceled, so I've been in Texas for three days. So right now, I'm in Texas. Maybe I'm not supposed to be in Texas. I'm supposed to be in Paris, but my flight was canceled, so I'm stuck in Texas. The action started in the past, three days ago, and it continues until now. I've been in Texas for three days. So now you know how to use the present perfect with the verb to be, I've been to, or I've been in, and a location. So it's your turn to practice. I want you to leave two examples and why not try different subjects so you can practice conjugating your verb have or has with your subject. So put those in the comments below. 
And if you found this video helpful, please hit the like button, share it with your friends, and of course, subscribe. And before you go, make sure you head on over to my website, j4isenglish.com, and download your free speaking guide. In this guide, I share six tips on how to speak English fluently and confidently. And until next time, happy studying. Way to go fixing this very common grammar mistake and sounding natural and fluent in English using advanced sentence structure. I can't wait to read your examples in the comments below and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.